Hi everyone, this week I want to talk about a proposal that was recently accepted by the Core Languages Committee, or excuse me, the Core Libraries Committee, the CLC of Haskell, um, uh, about uh, what was actually, I think, quite a small change. And there's a bit of a sort of a brouhaha going on about it. And so I thought I'd describe exactly what's going on, expl explain what what I think, what I understand is the cause of the of the uh, the brouhaha, and then uh, I'll sort of end with my own take on on things. So what, what is this about? This is about removing sort of a silly method that is in the eek type class. Um, so so the, the demonstration of this is fairly straightforward. Um, let's, which is going to be about the eek class. So we're going to, we don't want the prelude one, so we can redefine it ourselves. Um, and so this is the current definition of the eek type class. Is the eek type class describes some type A where we have an equality operator over A, and we also have a disequality operator over A. Um, and there's actually default implementations of both of these. So x equals y is not x to not equal y, and x does not equal y is not x equals y. Um, oh, and there's, what, what warnings do we have here? Oh, well, bah. Uh, let's not worry about that. It's sort of, Agelint is even suggesting what to do here. So let's just sort of ignore those warnings. Um, so this is the current definition of the eek type class. Um, so there's, a, there's already a f uh, at least one strange thing about it. One is these definitions, right? So if I define an eek instance and I don't provide either method, then these defaults would, would lead me to, to infinite recursion. Um, and that's a bad thing. Um, luckily, GHC is good at warning when we don't do this. If, if, we, if we forget both of the methods, we have to, um, uh, we have to supply one of them, we'll, we'll get a warning. So that's all, that's all quite good. Um, still a little strange when, we, when, when first explained. Um, what's the bigger problem here is that there doesn't seem to be any case in which defining this disequality operator does us any good, really. That not is just a single bit flip. It's actually in an optimized uh, uh, compilation, not very, very fast to compute. Um, so there's no reason not to ever uh, use this default implementation. And so the proposal is to go from this so this is today, and then tomorrow, it's going to look like this. So we still keep our same equality operator. Um, but now, instead of having a default implementation, and instead of having a, um, a, a class method that's an, uh, the disequality operator, we just write that separately. So this is going to be eek a to a to a to bool, and then sure enough, this gets the natural definition. Okay, um, so that's the change. Now, what impact does this change have? Well, it means that everyone who defines their own eek instance and writes out an implementation, a separate implementation for disequality than, um, uh, uh, the, other than the default, it means that all of that code is going to have to change. Um, the change is really easy. It's just erase this other implementation. As part of a feasibility study, this proposal, this, this, this process went through um, uh, an impact study. Um, and, and that said that there was, I think, 50 packages, somewhere around 50 packages that did this, all of which could just delete this implementation and then continue to work. So this is not a huge impact, but it is some impact, and that's exactly sort of the cause of 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 the of the of the brouhaha. Um, okay, so this is the change. Let's now talk about what's what what's happened in 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 reaction to this. Um, so here. What we what we have is is that this was proposed. It was discussed on a mailing list for a little bit, but now this CLC, this Core Libraries Committee, it has a process um, by which ex uh, uh, proposals can be thrown out and discussed and debated and then voted on. And this got proposed and voted on, and the vote was to accept this change. So it's it's this public process. Um, this one happened to go through on the quicker side. I think this was only sort of active in the process for a few days, although there was discussions on mailing lists for maybe another week or two before that. Um, and, and it was accepted. Since then, a bunch of people have come out of the woodwork saying, oh, this maybe isn't such a good idea. 
Um, and so, so I'm going to try to summarize some of these reasons why it might not be a good idea. Um, so one is that there's this feeling that in Haskell we make a lot of changes, maybe for no good reason, and that these changes affect other people. Right? So I describe that anyone who, who writes a manual implementation for disequality, they're going to have to change their code a little bit. And so the, this change, the reason for it is that it simplifies the definition of eek. There's no good reason to have this disequality operator in the method in the first place. So we're doing a, a little cleanup, but it does have this downstream effect. And so this causes churn in our ecosystem, right? Because then if some package needs to edit their code well, then they need to make another release. And maybe there's some other package that depends on this one. And so they may have to make another release to deal with changes in version numbers and things. So this would cause a little bit of churn in the system. And, and that's bad. And so one of the reactions to this proposal is, well, gee, you're making this small change. It is a small benefit we can observe a little bit of speed up from this benefit, from this change. Um, uh, but it's going to have this downside. And, and, so, and, and people, I think, feel outside of the, the decision-making loop on this. Um, so so uh, one particular thing that seems to be happening is what I'm going to call the Arthur Dent effect, um, uh, uh, invoking Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. So uh, one of the plot lines in, in, the, the, um, in Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy is that um, Earth is going to be destroyed. And of course, all Earthlings should know about this because there was a poster put up in the central galactic office of, of planet destruction um, saying that Earth is, is due to be destroyed for the building of a new superhighway. Um, and so any Earthling, of course, could have gone to that office and seen that. Of course, Earthlings don't know how to go to that office. And, and that's sort of the, the, the um, conceit in the book. Well, here we have, it's not quite as bad as that. Anyone on the internet can actually check out um, uh, these repos and look to see what's going on. But many people, of course, don't, right? And so a change like this comes along, and a lot of people get surprised by it. And surprise is bad. Um, and so that's, that's one thing, I think, that's, that's fueling this, is that there's a sense out there that these changes aren't being communicated very well. Now, when I say there's a sense out there that it's not being communicated well, I mean it's not being communicated well. Um, because by nature, if someone says that they feel like they're not being communicated with, well, that's then a failure of communication, right? We, we sort of, if someone says that, it is true by, by fiat. It doesn't mean that other people haven't tried. Um, although I'm not saying that in this case they, they have or they haven't. I'm not passing judgment on that. But, but if someone says that they, they were unaware, well, well, then they were unaware. Um, and, and there's also, I think, this feeling that there's some central group um, that makes decisions and, and that affects everyone else without sort of uh, being held accountable. So, so this, this is also, you know, there's, there is this group, the CLC. Um, they were comprised of people from the community who volunteered to work with them. There are opportunities. There's going to be regular opportunities to join the CLC. There's another similar group, which is the GHC Steering Committee. They, they make decisions about GHC. Um, and I know some of the reaction to this also sort of stems from some feelings from the GHC uh, um, uh, process that maybe GHC has had changes that people don't really like. These groups are open. Anyone can apply to be in them. Um, the GHC steering committee has been around a little bit longer. We have some written down rules for how to join. CLC is really just rebooted, so the rules haven't been written down yet, but I, I, I know that they will be. Um, so, so there's, but there's this feeling, again, that there's these, those people over there making decisions that affect all of us. So the one way, one way I'd like to encourage everyone to think about counteracting that is please come participate. We would love your participation. We would love your participation on these proposals. We would love your participation in our groups. Apply to be members of our groups. Um, uh, if you're working for a company that uses Haskell and you want your voice amplified even more, um, consider sponsoring the Haskell Foundation. So the Haskell Foundation is going to start a new group that, um, uh, that for sponsors to help give feedback to direction that the Haskell Foundation might take. Um, so more details about that to be to be made public soon. Um, but this is we're really trying to open up ways for lots of different people um, to to join this conversation. Um, so okay, so that's that's what's happened. What do I think of all that? Well, I, I think there's some truth in that. There has to be some truth. There's people who are frustrated by this current status quo of 
some people making decisions and then the decisions going out there. I wonder if part of that is that there's sort of a, a, a disconnect between the people making the decisions and the people who need to pay the price for, make, for those decisions, right? If I'm maintaining a library, and maybe I don't have the time or the desire to serve in one of these central committees, but if I'm maintaining a library and one of those committees makes a change, then it means that now I have to react to it. And maybe that's not so fair. So one thing that I'm, I'm thinking about in reaction to this is, is that I'm wondering if it would be the right thing for these central committees, whenever we approve a breaking change, that it is on us to submit patches to libraries. I don't know if that's a, if that's a practical idea. My other fellow committee members might be, might be horrified at this suggestion because it is quite a bit of work. But, but actually, if we're proposing to break your code, maybe we should then offer to help it. In the end, the work of fixing all of that code must be done, unless we lose some libraries. That would be pretty bad, though. And so the question is, do we, the people with some power, the people who have decided that this is a good thing, should we take on that work? Or should we force other maintainers to take on that work? So that's really the question here. So I, I think that we probably should be taking it on. And if it's so much work that we can't, then that's a suggestion that we probably shouldn't make the breaking change. In this particular case about this, this change to the eek type class, um, I believe that the, 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 the proponents of the change are, are expecting to submit patches to help all these maintainers keep things up to date. So I think in this particular case, the patches are easy and we plan on doing that. Um, I'm hoping that we do that also more in the future. I think that if we did that, we would have less tumult when we want to introduce a breaking change. Um, so, so, you know, I said I'd, I'd give my take on this whole thing. What do I think of this change? Well, I think it is a change for the better. I think that getting rid of this extra method simplifies the type class. It makes things a tiny bit more efficient. It makes this very basic type class easier to teach. These are all good things. I also think it's maybe a failure of timing in that right now the CLC has just rebooted. There's a ton of things that I think that people are, are, are expecting from the CLC. And mm, this maybe isn't high up on a lot of people's list. And so this kind of change may, make, may, may create an impression that Haskell is sort of more worried about small little aesthetic changes than big things that people care about. So my invitation to you is if there's something else that you care about, make yourself heard. Post something on the CLC uh, uh, repo. I'll, I'll, there's a link in the, in, in the description. And say, you know what? I think we need to do this. Let's focus on this, not this smaller thing. So I do think that the smaller thing is good. I don't know that now is the best time, but maybe there isn't a best time. I don't know. It's always easy to say now isn't a good time for something. Uh, but, but actually, when you have an ecosystem affecting change, the best time to do it is always now because it's always harder to do later. So there may not be a best answer here. Um, anyway, I do hope that, that you, you do get involved. We want more voices involved. And it can be hard sometimes to participate. It can be hard thinking, well, there's all of these experts out there and, and maybe they think that, you know, my ideas aren't going to be as good. But, but please don't let that stop you, right? We do want to hear your voice. If you're a Haskell user, then that's the right voice. That, that's someone who, who we need to know from. If you're a Haskell learner, that's someone that we need to hear from. So um, I hope that this has, has been uh, educational. I hope this has been interesting. Please do uh, take up that, that call to participate. Uh, thanks very much for watching. Bye.